Americans are increasingly vulnerable to hackers, scammers, spies, and con artists, but the belief that the government safeguards citizens is misguided. Instead, the U.S. government is selling citizens' data to the highest bidders, including the political class. Data vendors working for campaigns meticulously track individuals attending political events or fitting specific demographics. Phones and digital devices are unwittingly betraying users to politicians seeking votes, marking a new frontier in campaign tech with minimal regulations. This shift reduces citizens to economic units bought and sold by various entities. Daily, Americans relinquish intimate details, biological makeup, genetic blueprints, and biometrics to navigate a technologically driven world. These details form the foundation of massive databases accessible to the government and corporate partners, vulnerable to breaches, cyber attacks, and espionage. Over the years, the government has compiled extensive databases, including biographical information, biometrics, criminal backgrounds, and travel records with limited oversight or restrictions. In essence, citizens are unwittingly contributing to a surveillance ecosystem that compromises privacy and security in the name of technological advancement. In the United States, every individual is now part of some government database, with information increasingly shared among agencies, fusion centers, and law enforcement. The government has expanded its data repository on Americans by purchasing commercially available information, CAI, from third-party sources, as reported by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. CAI can reveal intimate details, raising concerns about misuse and threats to privacy and safety. This covert approach is an attempt to sidestep the Fourth Amendment, requiring probable cause and a warrant for government surveillance. The government's construction of massive databases without consent is troubling, and incidents like a recent global cyber attack further jeopardize citizens' privacy and security. Despite such risks, the government persists in building and expanding these databases, even selling private information. Departments of Motor Vehicles DMVs, have been implicated in selling drivers' personal data to businesses, exploiting loopholes and sidestepping regulations. The existence of the Driver's Privacy Protection Act, DPPA, since 1994 has not deterred state DMVs from lucratively selling driver data to third parties. This is part of a broader trend where the government engages in buying and selling its citizens to the highest bidders, emphasizing a pervasive era of surveillance capitalism driven by motives of profit and power. Welcome to an age where the government exploits its citizens' data for financial gain while compromising privacy and security. Have you frequented Whole Foods or tried target practice at a gun range? Enjoyed coffee at Starbucks while browsing online, visited in a <laughs> clinic, or tuned into Fox News or MSNBC? Played Candy Crush on your phone, strolled through a mall, or passed by a government building? Any of these seemingly ordinary activities exposes you to data collection, where your information is vacuumed up, sold, and exploited for targeted purposes. Remarkably, once identified and tracked, data brokers can digitally traverse your past, revealing your locations, companions, activities, and preferences. Once singled out, you become subject to endless tracking. No one is exempt. This era of for-profit surveillance capitalism characterized by constant monitoring, tracking, and commodification of our lives is only possible with our consent. Those disclaimers you hastily agree to, often without reading, signify your approval for activities to be monitored, recorded, and shared. It's a sobering realization about the extent to which our privacy is eroded in this unsettling age of data exploitation. Every move you make is under constant scrutiny as technology enables the monitoring, mining, and analysis of your data to construct a comprehensive profile, revealing your identity, preferences, and susceptibilities to influence or control. The pervasive nature of this surveillance is facilitated by our everyday choices, purchasing smartphones, installing GPS devices, opening social media accounts, and using loyalty cards for various transactions. Each action contributes to corporate America, 
building extensive dossiers for government entities, detailing our relationships, thoughts, expenditures, and activities. Technological advancements now allow marketers, especially in political campaigns, to create digital fences around our homes, workplaces, and frequented locations. This enables tailored messages aimed at specific outcomes, a level of intrusion that, if executed by anyone else, would be considered stalking and warrant police intervention. Unfortunately, law enforcement, armed with intrusive technologies like Stingray devices, is complicit in this surveillance. The concerns extend beyond data, buying and selling. The unchecked power of governments to target, track and detain citizens raises chilling implications. The potential for abuse of such unregulated authority is alarming, especially when contemplating the actions a totalitarian regime like Nazi Germany could have taken with this level of unbridled power. As society progresses, there is a worrisome trend toward a police state, with citizens unwittingly making it easier for the government to engage in pervasive and unchecked surveillance. Government surveillance captures your every move, what you read, your spending habits, social interactions, daily routines, and media consumption. Each action is meticulously monitored, mined for data, and analyzed to construct a comprehensive profile, assessing who you are and identifying potential means of control. The Washington Post reveals the likelihood that you've been assigned a color-coded threat assessment score, green, yellow, or red, based on various factors such as military background, online comments, medical conditions, or associations. This information feeds into databases like Main Core, enabling the identification and tracking of individuals who may resist compliance with the government's directives. The government, armed with sophisticated technology, invests in corporate surveillance tools to scrutinize constitutionally protected speech on social media anticipating and identifying potential extremists or those inclined toward anti-government actions, as reported by The Intercept. The government's arsenal of surveillance, digital stalking, and data mining has become tools of compliance and control over the American people. With the ability to eavesdrop on phone calls, monitor driving habits, track movements, scrutinize purchases, and even peer into homes, society is left with little room for indiscretions or independence. This paradoxical situation where revolutionary technology transforms into a prison, probation officer, stalker, and paternal authority epitomizes the eerie genius of the American police state. The analogy to the film Soylent Green is striking, much like the dystopian 1973 movie set in 2022 New York City where synthetic foods are made from a dark secret ingredient, people, we too, are unwittingly transformed into Soylent Green. In our context, personal data becomes the commodity, repossessed, repackaged, and exploited by corporations and the government to ensnare us. We are bred, branded, bought, and sold, not for food, but for our data. The film's ominous prediction about the use of people as a resource finds a modern counterpart in the exploitation of our personal information. As the increasingly invasive and insidious collaboration between the U.S. government and corporate America unfolds, escaping assaults on digital privacy seems nearly impossible without adopting a Luddite-like lifestyle entirely disconnected from modern technology. Urgently needed is an electronic bill of rights that safeguards we the people from predatory surveillance and data mining practices. In the absence of constitutional protections in the digital realm, we risk resembling Edward G. Robinson's character in Soylent Green, yearning for a past era where communication, purchases, and thoughts were free from tracking, processing, and storage by corporate giants like Google. Our data, once sold to government agencies such as the NSA and CIA, becomes ammunition for militarized police armed with futuristic technologies, threatening the very fabric of personal freedom and privacy. The call for an electronic bill of rights becomes paramount in resisting this encroachment on our rights in the digital age. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. 
What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting and informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.